Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of May. Now this month we have a huge movement in the sky. We've got Saturn moving into Aquarius. I'm so excited. This is going to be a big shift for all of us. And it's a 2.5 month taste of the energy that we're all going to experience starting next year for 2.5 years. Okay, so all through the month of May, all through the month of June and half of July, we've got Saturn in Aquarius. Then he retrogrades back into Capricorn for the rest of the year. And we start next year with Saturn in Aquarius for 2.5 years. This is huge. We're all going to experience a significant shift. So you definitely won't want to miss the mini reports this time. Now, as for mini reports, you can look from your moon, your ascendant or your sun. So if you're looking from your moon, that's where you're going to discover how you mentally and emotionally feel about this particular shift. You, you will feel it emotionally for sure. Those of you know, those people, the awakening wonders in the world who are, you know, really observing their own mental state, uh, how they feel about things. Those of us on a self-development path, self-development journey, you know, we're always looking at ourselves. How can we improve? So it's important to look from the moon, how you're going to feel that's going to be impacted. You can look from your ascendant as well. So that's the physical path. That's really what's going to happen. You know, how is it going to look around you kind of thing? What's, what's actually going to manifest? Then we've got your sun. You can look from the perspective of your soul. That's quite internal. That is a good thing to look up, especially if you are an artist, you're a very creative person. Perhaps you have a lot of planets conjunct your sun or you have one of the nodes conjunct your sun. It's very worthwhile taking a look at the sun as well. And many of you have reported in the comments below that you've noticed when you look from the sun perspective, you're getting new information that's really relevant to your life path. So it is worth taking a look. But if you are pressed for time, then you can look from just two, from the moon or the ascendant. So let's take a brief look at Saturn in Aquarius. What do we have going on here? Well, Saturn moves into Aquarius on the 30th of April to the 12th of July 2022. Okay, so that's roughly 2.5 months. And that's our little taste of Saturn in Aquarius that we're going to get this year. It's kind of like a little preview as to what the next 2.5 years are going to be about. That's 2.5 years starting January 2023. Saturn for the collective will be all about having the spotlight move from the top world leaders. At the moment, the spotlight is massively on leadership, you know, and it's made sure that Klaus Schwab has become a household name. Isn't that weird? But everyone knows his name now, right? Nobody knew him before. Everybody's talking about him now. So as we can see, you know, the spotlight has really been focused on the top. And I think I said it in my Saturn in Capricorn video. I said it's going to be like the top 10% of the top 10%. That's where the focus will be. You know, and that's that is kind of looking at 1% of people kind of, isn't it? So, um I'm saying with Saturn moving into Aquarius, the spotlight is going to shift from those top leaders. They will be in focus somewhat, but the spotlight's going to be more on humanity. The spotlight is going to be on us. What are we doing? How are we coming together? How are we sharing our resources? How are we demonstrating leadership and just getting on with it and building the society that we really want because so much of society is not working for all of us right so you know in Capricorn Capricorn's been all about the top decision makers and they've all been making so many rules you know too many rules in fact right so Capricorn too many rules and then Aquarius you're going to see a shift because there have been too many rules in in Capricorn there's this rebellious energy of Aquarius, which is needed to achieve balance, right? We need to break down some of those rules. We need to say, no, we need to say, look, this is ridiculous. 
You know, you want surveillance here, there, everywhere. You want my inside leg measurement? No. You know, we're going to have to say no. So we're going to see that happen massively, 2023 to 2025. I believe it's somewhere like March 2025. Okay, we're going to see quite quite a shift. Humanity's going to stand up for itself. Humanity's going to say no. Humanity's going to come together. You know, we're, we're awakening massively. Um, we're going to be looking at things like how do we innovate? We're going to be looking at, you know, can we create peer-to-peer -peer solutions? Can we use technology to cut out the middleman? That's been happening quite a bit already. You know, there is such a thing as peer-to-peer -peer banking. Could we have peer-to-peer -peer government? You know, and I think they kind of know that that's very possible. And that's why they've been kind of as power crazy as, as they've been over the last couple of years. I think they are doing that because they know that they could be made obsolete quite easily. And I think we've really got a potential to uh, create a society that works really well for all of us. And we're going to do that by using Aquarian technologies. What is an Aquarian technology? The internet. You know, look at the internet. Isn't it incredible? We're able to create channels like this and we're able to publish our own books and we're able to do so many things that when I was growing up as a kid you could not do these things. You couldn't run your own channel and provide your own news or you know you couldn't um, write your own books or you know you had to go through the large corporate hierarchies and, and you know things were very different. Whereas Aquarian technologies like the internet have flattened all these hierarchies and they've empowered uh, a lot of individuals. So I think we are going to see some empowerment, we're going to see change, we're going to see all of us coming together. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to this time because, you know, like a lot of us, we've we've had enough of Saturn in Capricorn. It's, it's been hard work. But there are some of you who Saturn in Capricorn is a very good thing. And let me tell you who that is. Uh, that's Pisces, Leo and Scorpio. Pisces, Leo and Scorpio, you guys are going to have from like mid-July to about Jan 2023, you can still make the most of the good transit that you're in because it's, it's going to shift for you guys. But let's keep going here with the dates, Saturn in Aquarius. So the other thing I wanted to cover off was the retrograde dates and the stationing dates. When, so when does Saturn retrograde? And of course, when he retrogrades, he stations for a little while. You know, he, he is, is quite slow. So the retrograde dates are Saturn retrogrades from 5 June to 23rd October. 2022. That is quite significant. When I've observed this personally, I know that it has been a really good thing for self-employed people in particular. They notice more clients come in at that time. I know I've experienced that myself, but some of the small business owners I know and network with, they have told me the same thing and they're not that into astrology, but they have, you know, noticed and observed that, yeah, because I've you know, told them when the retrograde dates are on and they've been able to look back at their ledgers and things like that and say, oh yeah, I really did have more business at that time. So observe Saturn retrograde, see how that is for you, what happens during the dates 5 June to 23rd October. Do you notice any shift in your workload or how things are working out for you? That's something to take a look at. Uh, Saturn stations at the one degree five minute mark. That's what I'm seeing there. So that's roughly the third, fourth, fifth, sixth June, thereabouts. Any one of those kind of dates, Saturn is particularly slow. And we're going to see basically Saturn, he retrogrades back into Capricorn from 13 July to 18 January 2023. So if Saturn in Capricorn is a good thing for you and I'll tell you who it's good for. It's good for Pisces, Leo and Scorpio. You've really got, you know, from the middle of July to January 2023 to capitalize on the remainder of your good transit. So this is kind of the last, I guess it's, what is that? That's around six months, right? You've got that chunk to just make the most 
of opportunities that might come your way, growth, you might be able to save quite a bit of money, you might be able to achieve a lot, you know, get organized, that kind of thing. So try to make the most of it. That's Pisces, Leo and Scorpio. Yeah. Now, this is huge as well because some of you are shifting out of Sadisati and some of you are shifting into Sadisati. Okay, so what is Sadisati? Those of you who don't know, Sadisati is a 7.5 year period of time that the ancient rishis have observed for thousands and thousands of years. They have observed that when Saturn passes over the moon, right? Let's say this is the moon here. When Saturn passes over the moon, it's painful. It's difficult and now because the moon is the mind and Saturn is the karmic accountant. He demands honesty. He demands, you know, that you love yourself and others. Okay. He wants to see you doing good, being good, being honest, right? So for spiritual people, and I've observed this so many times, my friends who are enormously spiritual, one of them, he was yeah, telling me about his life. And then I, it was so incredible. I looked up his chart and I saw he's in Sarisati and I couldn't believe it because he was just so peaceful and things were going fine over the last two, three years. And when I told him and we talked about it and he said, yeah, and he noticed that life had felt a bit like Groundhog Day, but he didn't notice any pain or any difficulty or any challenge or any of that. So if you're enormously spiritual, you're on the path, you're doing good, being good, all that kind of thing, Saturn won't touch you. Okay, so you're going to be fine. And I would say that's just about everyone who comes to watch this channel. You know, you're, you're all good, proactive, kind people. I see that in the comments. I see how wonderful all of you are and you're so supportive with each other and kind to each other and all that. And, you know, and you write nice things about the channel and, and the work that's being done here. So, you know, I anticipate that a lot of you aren't going to be touched by this. The people who get really rinsed and hammered by Sadi Sati are people like Fred Goodwin, the guy who, you know, uh, famous city banker. He did a lot of shady deals, basically, and Saturn took him to task massively, really, really took him to task. So, you know, there's quite a justice component there. I mean, Saturn does want justice, you know, he's exalted in that uh, seventh house where Libra is, where the weighing scales are, it's all about justice, right? So who's coming out of Sadi Sati, who's going in? All right, well, Sagittarius moons, you've got some good news here. You're coming out of Sadi Sati. You're going to get a 2.5 month taste starting in May of, of, of what it is to be free, right, of, of this Sadi Sati time, which you've been in for the last 7.5 years, which for most of you might have just felt like Groundhog Day. Maybe you've felt delayed, restricted, like you're working really hard, you can't get ahead, okay, that Sadi Sati could be why, all right? Um, so Sagittarius moons, you're, you're coming out of it 2.5 months, start of May, and then you're going to be really free of it, start of January, okay? And not only are you going to be free of it, you are going to be in your third from the moon transit. This is the Sagittarius moons, okay? Not the ascendants or suns. This is Sagittarius moon specifically. I hope I said that. Uh, if you're Sagittarius moon next year for 2.5 years, you're going to be rewarded. Okay, so make the most of that transit. You're going to have Saturn is going to give you opportunities. He's going to give you, I call it a platform building time where you can build the next platform up in your life. You can move, you can possibly buy a property or something. You can get a promotion. You can, there's lots of things you can do. Um, Saturn will want to help you. So that's 2.5 years starting January, 2023. It's going to be amazing. Now, Pisces moons, you are getting a taste of Sadi Sati over this next two and a half months. All right, so you're going to get a feel for 
uh, this Sadi Sati I've got in my notes here of, of what I call the school of champions. Yeah, I, I think it is that kind of thing. You're working with the taskmaster and he is, you know, one way I kind of phrase it is, and this was how I experienced it. When I had my first one, it was very difficult and I found it hard and I didn't know astrology at that time. When I've subsequently looked back, oh, so many things made sense for that entire period. But I, I know that there was, for me, it, the whole thing was kind of like Groundhog Day, but there were a few weeks here and there across the period that were just so intense and awful. And how it felt like for me was that Saturn was kind of ripping the weeds out of my mind or something. You know, he was, he was clearing me out. It was actually a really amazing process and uh, left me transformed in a very good way. But if I had consciously known this information, oh, well, wow, I could have worked with it, you know, rather than I was a bit of a victim to it. So I think there are massive advantages to knowing astrology, to knowing things in advance, then you're conscious of it. And when you're conscious of something, well, it starts dissolving anyway, you know, when you're empowered with a lot of knowledge and understanding, a lot of things can't touch you, all right? So, you know, it's, it's good that you're watching this, right? Because you know not to be worried about it. Don't be worried about it or frightened about it. Go in there, work with Saturn, and truly, it's, it's simple. Self-honesty and self-love, if you can do those, you're going to cruise through it. I've seen so many uh, people in my immediate vicinity, and especially friends of mine who are very spiritual, they just cruise through it. They might have a few weeks just here and there that are a bit tough, but that's about it, right? So, so Pisces moons, you are getting a taste of, you know, the school of champions, Sadi Sati, over the next 2.5 months, and then you will enter into it properly at the start of next year for 7.5 years. All right, I know it sounds long, but when you come out of it, Saturn rewards you, okay? He, he rewards you, he, you know, will put you up, uh, you know, in, in, in many ways, in many ways, he'll give you a massive boost. This is a really great time for things like learning skills, wanting to become excellent at something, wanting to master something. If you wanna become a great public speaker or something like that, you know, this could be that 7.5 year period where you really practice your skills and you really try to become great at something or, you know, yeah, writing books, be, being a great public speaker, whatever it is your thing, you know, it, it would be the kind of thing that I'd be wanting to really learn my astrology and go deeper and, and get better and, and, and learn new things, you know. It's that kind of thing where you, you need the 10,000 hours of practice. You know, you want that, you want Groundhog Day kind of thing. And that's what happens in that film. He comes this, becomes this brilliant uh, jazz pianist, doesn't he? He uses that Groundhog Day every day to become brilliant at something. That's one of the kind of things you can do over your Sati Sati period. I've seen it be enormously constructive, productive, especially second Sati Satis. I have seen those be amazing for people. And I've seen them be the time when people set massive cycles into motion you know, massive kind of 30 year cycles that, that really bear fruit over time. But you've got to kind of start those cycles somewhere. And sometimes people are starting uh, those things during a second Sadi Sati. Sometimes I've seen as well people, you know, having children uh, moving, uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing these kind of things in the second Sadi Sati as well. Uh, and of course, who needs to capitalize on Saturn and Capricorn still? Well, we've covered that one, Pisces, Leo, and Scorpio. So guys, I think we're good to start the mini reports. We are now gonna welcome Aries. Aries, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, or even Aries Sun. So we're gonna be taking a look at Saturn's movement over the next 2.5 months. What's it gonna be like for you? Okay, so Saturn is going to be in your 11th house, transforming how you take in new opportunities. Okay, now when we look at the aspects, 
We're going to see that your physical health might come into focus at this time. Your relationship with your children might also be in focus. Could also be your relationship to your creativity, how you feel about your creativity. You know, and that's that can be such a challenging area for so many of us. Sometimes we feel like we're not putting out as much stuff as we can. And, and you know, a lot of us, I know I suffer with that and I want to improve that. You know, I just want to be easier with myself. And, uh, you know, creativity should be a joy. It shouldn't be effort or difficult or so you know a lot of us have uh, things to improve with our relationship with our creative output right so that that could be in focus for you there could also be a restructuring of shared assets at this time as well so money could be in focus shared assets uh, assets with your family partner all that kind of thing so I'm actually in terms of this Saturn transit in particular Aries, I love this for you because basically Saturn's in the 11th house here. Saturn will help you profit in three places. So when he's in the 11th, the third or the sixth. So you are one of the lucky three signs that's getting a brilliant transit here. So you're getting a little taste, 2.5 months, but it's going to be in full swing starting January 22. 23 onwards for 2.5 years so look at that Aries you're one of the lucky signs and for 2.5 years you've basically got the ability to work with Saturn to build the next platform up in your life this may involve job promotions moving this is opportunities this is money coming in this is gains this is wealth this might be meeting the, the partner of your dreams you know all kinds of things I've seen people have children at this time as well and what I've seen is that Saturn is getting you ready because after that 2.5 year period, you are then going to enter Sadi Sati period where Saturn wants you to be stable. He wants you to be, you know, in a cozy place where you can just have your 7.5 years in, in a comfortable sort of a way. So Saturn is getting you ready now uh, and he's going to give you a lot of things. So be sure to capitalize on what's coming your way. As I say, you're just getting a little taste now but you're really going to feel it starting next year, okay, uh, for 2.5 years. As a full moon lunar eclipse, 16th of May, Scorpio, Vishaka Nakshatra. All right, this is a big one. And this is happening in your eighth house. So Aries, there could be something sudden or something might change dramatically, possibly, uh, in regards to now the obvious thing of course is eighth house type matters which is of course family or shared assets or this kind of thing but one of the things I was looking at here was the Lord uh, Mars I was looking at Mars in particular and I'm seeing that there could even also be a change in your network circle or even something to do with uh, your finances but that's not necessarily connected in with someone else so Take care during the eclipse, all right, 16th of May. It's just a good time to go slow. You know, don't book yourself in for anything, uh, you know, too, too busy. I don't know, if you, if you can really kind of, um, if you're in control of your diary and you can sort of leave that time so that you're not overly busy, that, that would be a good idea as well. And that's kind of networking as well. Like, yeah, you don't want to have, have too many meetings or something. Uh, on that 16th of May, if that's possible. The new moon is going to happen on the 30th of May. That's in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. So for you, that's in your second house. So this is a really great time when we have a new moon. It's a great time to plant a seed. You can plant a seed for healing your family line. Isn't that beautiful? I think that would be a wonderful thing to do, to really kind of wish for or pray for some form of healing for your whole family and if you can identify a pattern that is in your family line you know sometimes when we look at our family lines we can see that oh wow all of the I know a friend of mine she has this she has um, observed that all of the cousins and herself the they all have these high-powered jobs in great big corporations. They make it to the top of companies, but they don't get married, you know, for some reason. That's something that's happening with all the 
the women in in that you know family they can she can kind of see it in her auntie's children like when you analyze the whole line that kind of thing so you know if you can identify some kind of recurring pattern that's happening in your family you can really wish for a healing uh, at this time that, that could be quite possible areas but you know in terms of the month of May I am seeing that this should be a good month for you this will be some adjustment but I think you're gonna have a nice taste of Saturn here you're one of the lucky three as I say is getting a good transit so thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining now this is for Taurus ascendant moon or sun and we're going to be taking a look at the movement of Saturn uh, Saturn is going to be in your 10th house okay so this is covering May June to 12 July right so the 2.5 month taste of Saturn it's very exciting you're getting a preview of the energy that's going to start next year for 2.5 years so Saturn's going to be in your 10th house all right Taurus he's going to work you hard you're you're in the spotlight kind of actually your a lot of your uh kinder houses are going to be lit and look at that you're going to be working hard you're going to be working hard in your career your home life your public image you're going to be seen it's all going on so all these areas might be you know when, when saturn goes through an area he's kind of um he's the karmic accountant he's checking everything twice you know and when he retrogrades he, he looks at everything slowly he rifles through everything and he might be helping you restructure he might be helping you improve he might be bringing up kind of weak links or weak areas for you to take a look at you know he's, he's kind of pressing on things saying all right well you know he, he wants because he wants you to grow he wants you to do better so Saturn's good to work with yeah there's a, there's a lot of work coming your way I feel now I've got the note here please take care of your health really really important we do have the 12th house you know the third aspect there so it's going to be important to take care of your health don't overwork and also just keep an eye on your expenses as well you don't want to you know clock up too many expenses or definitely don't clock up any credit card debt or any of that right now there is a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May and that's in Scorpio Vishaka nakshatra this for you is in your seventh house so there could be a sudden change at work or in your career uh, and I'm, I'm kind of one of the things I'm doing here with this lunar eclipse is is that the sudden change at work or career I, I really am looking at Mars there um, but in terms of the seventh house there could also be some kind of sudden change to do with your marriage or your partnership so just take care in all of those areas it's a good time to go slow you know if, if you're able to not book too many meetings and that kind of thing that's that's a really good thing around the 16th of May now the new moon on the 30th of May is in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra in your first house this is all about you this is your new moon okay so what are you going to wish for what are you going to plant a seed what do you what do you want to set into motion you know something big something small I, I think the scale doesn't matter but you can wish for or, or plant a seed for something that's going to impact your whole life you know um, what would you like that to be and I always like these questions about you know if you were to meet God and you could ask him anything what would you ask him what would you want to know you know and I always like that because I always think of something and then I always want to change my mind but anyway Taurus it's looking pretty good as for the Saturn side of things Saturn in the 10th is good okay it's 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 hard work it's long hard work you know and you're going to be putting in the hours at work you're probably going to want to be getting ahead but you might be finding it difficult or delays or it takes a lot of time or you know but you you will see you're going to be able to really capitalize on this uh, March 2025 onwards all that hard work is massively going to pay off for 2.5 years March 2025 onwards for 2.5 years so put in the groundwork now work hard now you see the rewards are going to come they are going to come but and you, you might also have to be humble as well Saturn in the 10th you're gonna to have to be humble I think but I don't think that'll be hard for you Taurus all right thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini 
Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Moon or Sun. And we're going to be taking a look at the movement of Saturn. Saturn's going into your ninth house. And this is across May, June and the first half of July. So this is a little taste. You get a preview of the energy that's going to start for 2.5 years starting next year. So Saturn is going to be in your ninth house. So this transit is definitely going to be about money. It's going to be about your fortune, your confidence. It's going to be about your career. It's going to be about your service in the world, what it is that you do. All these things are going to be in focus. It's also going to test your inner authority. Where is your power invested? This is going to be really important. You know, do, does your power drain away unnecessarily or easily to other people's opinions? to society, to authority figures, you know, all of these things are going to be in focus. And you're going to be given many opportunities to identify where your power is going and then to bring it back and say, do you know what? I call the shots on this. Or you know what? This is what I believe. Or I'm going to change my belief around something. This is a great time for you to do belief work. Life will reflect back to you what you really believe by what you're manifesting around you. And you're going to have the opportunity to make a change and to believe better and to ideally believe more in yourself, to trust yourself more. Okay, your confidence is being highlighted here. That's uh, the third house there. So, yeah, you, you know, um, this is a time where you could become very empowered. And you'll see this happen, you get a taste of it now, but you're gonna get quite a lot of that uh, 2.5 years starting next year. So I'll cover that when we get closer to, to the start of next year. You might also take up new studies. Great time for you to study as well, okay? Uh, find a new mentor, all that kind of thing. Perhaps step up and be a mentor. That's another possibility. Now there is a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May in Scorpio Vishaka Nakshatra. This for you is happening in your sixth house. So when I was analyzing this for you guys, yes, I was looking at where this is happening in terms of the sixth house, but I was also looking at the position of Mars. And what I'm gonna say here is that there could be a sudden change at work. There could be a sudden change with a legal case or even with your father. Um, this could actually for you end a health issue which would be great, wouldn't it? You know, this could just absolutely put a stop to a health issue um, if, if you have been going through something health-wise. So I actually think for you, Gemini, this, this uh, full moon lunar eclipse could potentially be a good thing because it might put an end to something that you are hoping uh, to have, you know, that come, come to an end. Now there's a new moon happening 30th May, Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This for you is happening in your 12th house. So, oh, I love this. This is a new moon in the 12th house. You're going to be a little bit more psychic than usual and you might get ideas, downloads, insights, keep a dream journal, keep a little, you know, I don't know, notepad or something for ideas when you're out having coffee or whatever. Um, but a good time to plant a seed, to have, you know, yes, to have wonderful ideas come through, but you could also plant a seed, a wish, that something be cleared from your subconscious. If you have a limiting belief or pattern or dynamic operating in your life, that you keep seeing that come again and again and you're tired of it, wish for that to go. Or wish for yourself to let it go. You know, that, that's another thing as well. You could do some Dr. David Hawkins work, Letting Go, it's a, such a wonderful book. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun. We are going to be taking a look at the movement of Saturn into your eighth house. And this is going to cover the month of May, June and the first half of July there. So Saturn is going to be in your eighth house. This transit is definitely about shared assets. It could be about turning your passion into your career. Oh, Cancer, I'm so excited for you. This is a great, great transit. I remember my one. I remember my Saturn, yes, eighth 
house transit because that is the time when I left the corporate world and I started my astrology channel and I, you know, yeah, I've been doing this and it's been so good. And it was difficult. I'll tell you, it was a 2.5 year, very difficult time in my life. Um, and what I will say to you is save money, okay? I think you've still got time to save money, don't you? Because you're gonna have, you're still gonna be, where are you gonna be? Let me check. I'll edit out any extra time. Yes, you're still gonna have Saturn in, uh, you know, opposite your moon sign or center. So you're still gonna have Saturn seventh from, right? So you're still going to have the opportunity to save money, I would say. Because what basically, with an eighth from, especially the moon or ascendant, eighth from moon or ascendant transit, could even be from the sun as well, but could even be from natal Saturn. That's another thing I've been experimenting with, which is amazing. But anyway, basically an eighth from transit, you will notice discontinuity. And I had that. Basically what I had was I was doing my corporate career and it was, the discontinuity was happening. You know, contracts were vanishing. I, I was applying, I was trying to get work, I was trying to make it all happen. And I could only materialize these very kind of small contracts, like a two, two day a month job and things like that. So, um, you know, just enough to cover the bills, but not enough to to keep things going so yeah i was doing my astrology work um at that time and and yes very 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 tight spot and you know i'm only just starting to see after gosh how long i've been doing this maybe five years i'm just starting to see like a, a teeny tiny little bit of you know things are kind of okay now sort of ish like but it's, it's taken a lot of time it's been hard I'll tell you, so, so I've got the notes here. It could be about turning your passion into your career. This could be the time where you leave the corporate thing and you really, you know, you start your thing in a big way. But I'm not saying that like within this, say for example, 2.5 years, so that's Jan 2023 to March 2025. I'm not saying that you'll have, you know, totally transformed your career into the new thing. Uh, that process could be ongoing and I think I'm in my oh, I've kind of forgotten but yeah I, I think I'm still in my ninth from transit and it's, it's taking time it's taking time I'll tell you my transition is taking time that's because I've got a lot of Saturn in my life anyway I'm excited for you cancer because if 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 you want to change from a corporate career and and go into your passion this is a, an excellent turning point where you have are going to have opportunities where you'll be able to start okay you'll be able to start making the changes you'll be able to maybe turn your full-time job into a part-time job or maybe you'll be able to do two or three weeks of going into the career of your passion did i say two or three weeks i meant like two or three hours per week or something like that you know you'll be able to start you'll be able to to start changing things a bit so i'm excited for you but what I will say is use July of this year to January of next year to save money. Save money because then you're going to start Saturn 8th from, you know, your moon ascendant sun, whatever it is. You're going to start that for 2.5 years and there could be discontinuity in your career. There could be some breaks. There could be some changes. There could be some shifts. You're going to want to have money saved. I wish I did. I didn't. And yeah, I know how tough that can be. All right, so uh, let's take a look what else we got here. Full moon, lunar eclipse. This is huge. This is happening on the 16th of May. This is in Scorpio, Vishaka, Nakshatra. So this for you is going to be in your fifth house. So there could be a sudden change, something to do with your children, your marriage partner, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever. There could be a sudden change or shift regarding shared assets that's a possibility as well uh, definitely there could be some kind of financial impact with this eclipse but i'm not particularly seeing anything to to worry too much about or any of that but um what i will say is take care around the 16th of may all right that's an eclipse something could change something could change dramatically 
Now we've got a new moon happening on the 30th of May in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening in your 11th house. So you could plant a seed Oh, to have a lot of fresh abundance come in. This is wonderful. Yes, beautiful. Wonderful to have a new moon in the 11th house because I always see a new moon as a portal. You could bring a lot of abundance in at this time. So it's definitely, you know, it could be opportunities at that time, real life opportunities equally. It could just be a time where you plant the seed, you know, and that's what we do at new moons. We plant a seed, we make a wish, we set some kind of intention or we write something in our journal, you know, and um, you can even write that in your journal now while you remember, you know, on, on the day in your diary or, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do it in advance. So this is exciting, Cancer, but I'm, I'm loving this. I, I'm loving what this time could represent for you. The other thing about Saturn being in your eighth house is that, you know, he'll be um, testing things like, or helping you restructure even your gifts and abilities, your hidden gifts, talents, abilities, your occult skills. Some of those could come online at this time, or they, you know, Saturn might be helping you work through those or develop those a bit more. Very exciting time, Cancer. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you. Thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Moon or Sun. We are going to take a look at the movement of Saturn into your seventh house. Okay, and this is going to cover the month of May, June and the first half of July. So Saturn's going to be in your seventh house. This transit puts a lot of things in focus for you actually because it also puts yourself, your first house in focus. I mean, you've got a lot of Kendra energy lit up here. So this, this is prominent for you. Your home life is gonna be in focus. Who you are as a person, that's gonna be in focus. You know, your public image and reputation, that's gonna be in focus. You know, how you communicate is going to be tested. If you run your own business, that's your efforts there are going to be tested, especially if you have a business partnership or anything like that. Even your inner authority is going to be tested. My goodness, a lot is going to be tested at this time. So, and you're quite in the spotlight here. You're in focus. So there's a lot going on. I feel like this could be a busy transit. Could be a good time to study could be a great time actually to learn more personal development or self-development skills. I actually think for you, Leo, this transit of uh, Saturn into your seventh house, this could be really good for definitely relationships, empathy, understanding yourself at a really deep level, psychology, um, beliefs, all that kind of thing. I think you're going to be given many opportunities to restructure and improve all of these things so that you're you're going up in life right so this is good work with the greatest cosmic personal trainer we have right which is saturn and uh you know if you work with him he's a hard taskmaster but you'll come out doing amazingly well now we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May in Scorpio, Vishaka Nakshatra. That for you is happening in your fourth, that for you is happening in your fourth house. So this could be a sudden change at home. Uh, this could be a change in your marriage or in your business if you're self-employed. Uh, something to do with mother or father might change or shift. So these are some of the things to be looking out for around the 16th of May. For that, I was looking at Mars as well. So yes, I was looking at your fourth house, but I was also looking at Mars because that, the Lord is quite significant in this eclipse. Um, we've also got a new moon, 30th May, Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. So this is happening in your 10th house. You can plant a seed for your career. Fantastic, Leah. You've had a very career-focused time, I must say, and it's, it's kind of continuing. What I like about your Saturn transit this time is that you know, you do have new things lighting up. The area of home, you are going to be focused on that as well. So it's not just career for you, but definitely with the new moon happening in the 10th house of career, um, you will be wanting to plant a seed for your career, for what you do in the world and 
perhaps for that you know next stepping stone what is it that you would like to go to next perhaps and you know perhaps you're wishing for that to be revealed which of course it will be okay just tune into your intuition the next steps are always being shown to us it's just we who don't notice or look you know but our, our guides are always speaking to us all the time all right thank you so much leo we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for joining virgo you are one of the lucky signs you're one of the lucky three signs okay so we've got you know each time we look at a saturn transit there are three signs that profit big time and you are one of them so uh, Saturn is going to be moving into your sixth house. This is very auspicious. This is very good. So we're looking at Virgo ascendant, moon or sun. And we're looking at the movement of Saturn throughout May, June and half of July. Uh, this, this is a good movement for you. It's a good 2.5 month taste of the Saturn energy we're all going to experience start of next year onwards for 2.5 years all right so you're getting a little taste of it now so observe that okay see what it brings it might bring you some ideas and plans and things that you get ideas for that you'll be executing at the start of next year so Saturn's going to be in your sixth house this transit will help you progress in your career uh, lots of opportunities are come your way hopefully as well Saturn should strengthen you he should strengthen your health and you know your subconscious your confidence is also going to be tested and worked through at this time okay so it's it's not exactly challenge free there, there will still be some challenges here and there but there's but i remember my saturn sixth from transit actually and gosh it was amazing i just kept getting opportunities and people and just things they just kept coming onto my path and it was like you, you know you, I would say no to so many things and another thing will come in. It was incredible. There was one Saturn 6 from transit, absolutely blew my mind. So, uh, yeah, I've got the note here. Saturn has the potential to help you cut out bad habits and replace them with better ones. So if you really are on your spiritual path, if you're really committed to improving yourself, getting rid of addictions, going up in life, you can make the most of this. this is going to be a great transit for you now we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of may in scorpio vishaka nakshatra this is in your third house so a sudden change can happen at work um, you may get a boost to your confidence at this time that's quite possible or you you know it could be the other way your, your confidence could be knocked at this time as well so just watch out for that there could also be a change with friends or family so just observe, see what happens for you. Then we've got a new moon, 30th May, Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening in your ninth house. So you can plant a seed, because that's what we do at New Moons, we plant seeds. You can plant a seed for what skills you would love to learn in the future that will really help you boost your expertise or your authority. Okay, there's always new skills that we could do with learning. And so many things I've been meaning to learn and I put them off only just recently I learned how to use my free QuickTime software with my Mac. I did. I was like, oh, this is great. It records the screen. And like, can you imagine? I've been putting that off for so long. And I, I should have learned that ages ago. I should have also observed what was happening in the sky to make me learn that. I don't know. But one day, all of a sudden, it just happened. I learned something new. All right, Virgo, you are one of the lucky three signs. So I'm, I'm excited for you, Virgo. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Moon or Sun. Libra, we are going to take a look at the movement of Saturn into your fifth house. And this is going to cover the month of May, June and, you know, the first half of July. You're going to have a 2.5 month taste of Saturn in your fifth house. And you're going to really experience that for 2.5 years from the start of next year. Pretty exciting. So for you, wherever you know Saturn goes, he tests us, right? So he's going to test you a little bit. He's going to challenge you a little bit in the following areas. So you might experience tests by your boss or by superiors at work. 
You might be tested by your employees if you're a boss. Um, you could also find that there might be some tests in your romantic life uh, and or your relationship with your children. Even things like your relationship with your creativity, your creative output. You know, do you always feel like you never do enough and things like that? You know, what, what role does creativity play in your life? Is it something that you just thoroughly enjoy or you know, like me, I'm working on my relationship with my creativity. I always feel like, oh, I'm never, you know, I need to make more and do this and do that. And, and I never have the time because I'm always busy. So expenses could go up at this time as well, Libra. So I think there are some tests for you. I'm not seeing anything too bad. Saturn, Saturn going through the fifth, it, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, you know, you, you might find that you become a little bit conservative at this time financially that would be a good thing uh, you know it's a Saturn in a sunny place right you might find that it's quite um, helpful in terms of getting off addictions uh, that is a possibility if there are any addictions that you want to release or get off this this could be a really good time to do that if there's something like that that you want to restructure or, or achieve there I've also got the note here, be careful with the stock market as well. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on that at all. And I'm certainly not suggesting anybody, you know, do anything drastic, but it's just the kind of thing that pay extra attention. Uh, if, if you are involved in that kind of thing, you know, um, that's something you, you want to be proactive about. That's, that's all I'm saying there. Now we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May. That's in Scorpio, Vishaka, Nakshatra. So this for you is happening in your second house. There could be sudden shifts or changes to do with family or your savings or shared assets or, you know, personal investments you might have. It could, it could have quite a financial bent is what I'm seeing there with the 16th of May. Uh, again, I'm not particularly saying one way or another what's going to happen there but uh, I am saying that that's those are the areas of life that are being touched potentially by the eclipse for you. Um, then we've got the new moon happening 30th May Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your eighth house. So you could plant a seed at this time for and, and wish for some new occult skill or gift to open up within you. you know, perhaps there's some kind of skill or gift that maybe you've always been intrigued by people who are psychic or you've always been intrigued by people who are really intuitive. I know I always was when I was a kid, I was so intrigued and I never ever dreamed, I never ever thought I'd be doing what I do now with astrology I had no idea you know um, and I loved astrologers when I was a kid but like yeah it's amazing how you know sometimes we don't know what we're going to be doing later in life and it, I was always attracted to psychics and astrologers and all these people from when I was a child I loved them I never knew I could be having anything to do with this stuff I had no idea and like now I'm kind of doing some of this so it's like wow so yeah if there's some kind of occult skill or gift or something that intrigues you or fascinates you it intrigues you for a reason because you might have the gift yourself okay so you know when you look at someone you go wow and you admire them and the reason you admire them is there's a resonance there's some kind of you can probably do that I'll give you another example music and I, I still don't really know how to write music or any of that but someone once told me because I said I'm always fascinated by how musicians write music and that's for, that for me is like a fantasy skill to have someone told me that well the reason like they said to me that if you have that fascination within you you probably got the skill within you that still blows my mind I still don't think I could do that but anyway Libra, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your look at that. We're talking about creativity here, the fifth house. Of course, we're talking about art and intuition and occult gifts and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I think this is going to be a good transit for you. It's going to be very creative. It, it has the potential to 
you know, restructure your creativity. You can come out of this Saturn uh, fifth transit being enormously empowered creatively. So I'm excited for you, Libra. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just checking the time. This is Scorpio Ascendant, Moon or Sun. And we're going to check the movement of Saturn in your fourth house. He's going to be there across May, June and the first half of July. So what does this mean for you? Well, this is known as Saturn Dire Period. And this is an up and down period. This can be amazing. This can yield you really good things. You can achieve things. You can, you know, yes, I remember during my Saturn entire period, I moved into my apartment in, in England and boy, did I love it. I was so happy. One of the best things ever, but there were massive challenges associated with that as well. Everything came good, but it wasn't without massive stress paperwork, dealing with lawyers, all kinds of problems, right? I had some uh, extraordinary things. So I remember my entire period as having amazing things and very, very difficult things to just extremes, right? That, that's how I remember it for me. Now for you, you might discover that there are ups and downs in the areas of your home life. You could be moving and you could be moving into the place of your dreams, but there could be some legal challenges or something associated with that. It could, it could pan out that way. Uh, it could be that challenges appear in your career. So it's, it's the kind of thing where you're promoted and, and you're doing amazing, but then there's some very difficult team member that's, that's there with you or something like that. Um, you could also be being tested in regards to how you feel about yourself as well. So there could be some confidence stuff here a little bit maybe, but you've been through your third from transit, I do believe. So your confidence should be quite good by now. Saturn should have worked through that and, and, and brought you to a new level there. So be confident as you, as you move forward, as you move through this period, that's going to help you. Um, I've got the note here. So yes, there's confidence, but there's also being humble. It's so interesting. It's a fine balance to, to tread and you're going to be asked to, to tread this balance. So I've got the note here, career will likely be tested, but if you stay humble, if you work hard and don't expect too much from your surroundings, then you're going to become quite a strong player. There's a lot of Kendra energy lit up here for you and you know, th this is a big time, prominent time. You're needed in the world. You're going to be busy, I do think. Now we've got full moon lunar eclipse happening 16th May, Scorpio, Vishaka, Nakshatra. For you, this is happening in your first house. Wow, that's incredible. So there could be some sudden shifts or changes that are possible with your sense of self, even with yourself physically. Okay, so please do take care. All right, please do, um, don't be rushing anywhere. Don't be, you know, really build time into your day. Don't book extra meetings, you know, see if you can rest. Uh, this is not a time to rush, okay? So, so take care of your health at this time, take care of your physical body, take care of, of your, your sense of self, your internal self as well. Take extra care at this time, Scorpio. Now there's a new moon happening, 30th May, Taurus, Rohini, Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So if you are single, that's really wonderful because you can plant a seed to meet the love of your life. You know, who's that person that you would love to meet and marry? Uh, you can wish for a life partner at this time. So Scorpio, I'm excited for you. Take care as you go through this, this transit. You're getting a little taste now. You get the full thing start of next year. So just see how it goes. Observe. See how it goes. And you can, of course, write a comment below. And let me know what you experience. I'd love to hear from you. All right, Sagittarius. Welcome, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for joining. This is Sagittarius Ascendant, Moon or Sun. Sagittarius, I have great news for you because this Saturn transit is going to be amazing for you. All right, this is really good. This is especially good for the Sagittarius moons. Okay, Sagittarius moon people, you're very lucky. You're now getting a taste of freedom. You're coming out of Sati Sati period. This is a 2.5 month taste of the energy that you're going to experience 
at the start of next year for 2.5 years. Okay, so especially significant for Sagittarius moons. But regardless, you know, this is good for you uh, if you're an ascendant or a sun. This is the place Saturn transiting third from. This is the place where Saturn is able to give you promotions, give you you know, money, wealth, he'll help you move, he'll help you find the right people, he'll give you opportunities, confidence, all kinds of things. It's really, really good. So you're one of the lucky three signs that's benefiting from, you know, a very positive transit. Because when Saturn gives, he gives forever, right? He gives big, he gives forever as well. So some good, big, forever stuff is coming your way. You're getting a taste of it. In this 2.5 months so you, you might just feel a little bit better in the 2.5 months but you're going to really start to experience the effects start of next year for 2.5 years work with Saturn you know be proactive say yes to opportunities go out make sure your wardrobes are ready make sure your shoes are polished and whatever right make sure you're ready to go it's that kind of thing because it we have to meet the planets halfway. They can't do everything for us. You know, they can make the conditions good, but we have to get up off the couch, get dressed, get out the door, turn up on time. We've we got to do a lot of work. So Saturn rewards the hardworking people. Okay, so make sure that's you. Now, I've got the note here. You're coming out of Sarisati. Saturn's going to want to reward you. You'll have a 2.5 month taste of this energy and you'll have 2.5 years of this next year. Yeah. It's going to be great for your confidence, your creativity, for new work, for new travel opportunities, for meeting people. You know, your network might expand. This is great. Really enjoy this time. It's one of the lucky three signs. Now there is a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May in Scorpio, Vishaka Nakshatra. That's happening for you in your 12th house. So there could be sudden shifts um, that may require you to instigate some kind of travel plan you might be needed somewhere else uh, so what i will say to you is please take extra care if you're traveling around the 16th of may please do not rush anywhere please build time into your day take extra care go slow okay but there's something you might be needed to um yeah maybe maybe you're needed at home or something like that and you've got to drive a few hours or something along those lines i'm not quite sure but that was the kind of thing i was seeing there um, and then we've got new moon happening 30th May, Taurus Rohini Nakshatra happening in your sixth house. So you can plant a seed to be shown next steps in your career. Okay, if you want to know what you should be doing next and you, you want that next stepping stone, plant a seed for that to be shown to you and it definitely will be. So Sagittarius, I'm super excited for you. You're one of the lucky signs it's getting a good transit here so make the most of it all right i'm going to welcome capricorn capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining just taking the time we're good so this is capricorn ascendant moon or sun and we're going to be taking a look at saturn's movement into your second house now i know my capricorn moon people my heroes of the zodiac i've been i've been cheering you on this whole time you are the sadi sati people um i'm going to say things are going to get easier they are things things are now hopefully going to get easier and, and really observe this really observe the next 2.5 months to see the shift of energy you might experience little shift that's possible it, it may not shift dramatically um, see how you go with it but there, there should be some shift it, i think it should be a bit better for you okay but it's not long to go now you've only got so at the start of next year 2.5 years to go right i know it sounds long but time is flying right so and we must never waste time okay so enjoy the time that's there you know when i've gone through really tough transits i have actually enjoyed them because they've been deeper for me like they've tested me more and i've gained more wisdom i've learned more so i actually value the tough times weirdly i've come to anyway uh, i struggled with them enormously when i wasn't engaged in astrology and self-development work and things like that oh life can be awful you know but when we watch videos like this and 
engage in self-development work, spiritual work, when we're on the path, I mean, that's the greatest thing an individual can do. That's what Dr. David Hawkins said. He said, the greatest thing anyone can do is just find the spiritual path and be on it in, in a lifetime. And I agree with that, you know, so you're doing that. So you're doing amazing, right? Uh, you're one of the people who's interested in helping humanity. I know that for sure. So keep going, Capricorn. You're doing amazing. Now, um, Saturn's going to be in your second house. Yes, Saturday South is continuing for the Capricorn moons. It's true, but the pressure should ease a little bit. Keep being honest. Keep being loving, right? So self, self-love, which is self with a capital S. So that is loving yourself and the all and sometimes we're serving and loving the all but sometimes the most loving thing we can do is to say no to everybody and to love the self so you got to work out what to do when uh, that's everybody's job the focus is going to be on family it's going to be on home it's going to be on opportunities that are going to help you gain wealth this is a wealth time this is a money time where you're going to be building up savings hopefully um, or you're going to be restructuring shared assets restructuring your current wealth or how, how money is set up for you or, or however that works. So that, that's going to get a bit of a work through. Now there's going to be a full moon lunar eclipse, 16th of May, Scorpio, Vishaka, Nakshatra. For you this is happening in your 11th house. So there may be sudden shifts regarding your work. Uh, if you're employed, if you're like in a big company or something like that, there could be some shifts regarding your work, your career. Um, there could be some shifts regarding your investments or assets as well at this time. Now there is a new moon on the 30th of May, Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So you can plant a seed that you will be able to successfully launch some creative project that's really dear to you. So what creative project do you hold dear in your heart that you think, God, I'd love to make that happen? You know, plant a seed so that that happens. And it, when you're planting the seed, just visualize. It just takes a minute, you know. Uh, you can sit with your diary or journal or write a couple of words as well. I know a lot of you do that out there with these reports. And one of the things you can just visualize this incredible successful creative project. Maybe your film is being launched and you're watching it with, with a few friends or something and how much fun that it will be. It's a good time to, to visualize these things and, and plant the seed and then let it go. And then naturally the energy will come to, to make that creative project happen. So Capricorn, keep going <laughs> you know you, you just got to keep going there it's it's, it's all going to come good but there are some nice things there for you as well this month especially that new moon all right aquarius welcome aquarius thank you so much for joining i'm just checking the time we're good aquarius moon yeah sari sati is is going on i know this is hard um, and you're going to be starting to feel the, the, you're coming up to the sort of hard bit where you know um, Saturn will be passing over your moon. Uh, so that's the Aquarius moon people who are in Sadisati phase. But we are dealing with Aquarius ascendant or Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun. And we're going to take a look at Saturn being in your first house across the month of May, June, and the first half of July. This is your 2.5 month taste of Saturn in Aquarius all right so he's kind of coming home for you and Saturn loves being in Aquarius I'll tell you something I didn't say this to the Capricorn people just now but I'll say this for you because Saturn I read somewhere in a, in a very I've forgotten which book it is I'm so annoyed but I can't remember where I read this but it was that Saturn is more at home in Aquarius than he is in Capricorn. It's, it's, a, it's a place of more purity. And I think the reason that Saturn would like it better in Aquarius is because uh, in Capricorn he's in the spotlight. Whereas in Aquarius, you know, he's, he's in the spotlight and he's wearing a suit, right? A bit uncomfortable. In Aquarius, he's with people wearing a hoodie you know it's kind of a bit different right so I think Saturn's more comfortable here and sorry I just had to cut the video there Saturn is more comfortable in in Aquarius um, you know it's it's a humbler place to be it's easier I don't know I think he has more fun there but 
yeah let's have a look here saturn is going to look there, there, there will be challenges especially um for the uh aquarius moon people you're going to experience a taste of kind of the height of sardi sarthi now you're going to feel the height of sardi sarthi starting next year for 2.5 years not all of it will be bad okay just a few weeks here and there it will be quite testing quite challenging one thing I've learned is that when things are really tough or when things are really difficult, Saturn will provide a healing. He will just naturally provide healing energy. Okay, You have to be in the present moment so that you don't miss the healing. What I've discovered in life is that there is always healing energy that comes after a crisis, that comes after like massive anger. If you're massively angry or rage or something like this, you, there will be healing energy. That will come in now if you're mentally kind of stuck in the past or stuck with the problem and you're not in present time you'll miss the healing okay it's not like the healing didn't come it's that you were ruminating still you were still stuck in the past so that's why you miss the healing energy what i'm noticing and observing is that healing energy always comes in after a crisis just very soon after a crisis or after a difficulty <clears throat> so be in the present moment and you will capitalize on on the healing and the lessons and everything will make sense as well i've got the note here you're going to be busy and this is aquarius ascendants and sun as well and and moons this is this is all the aquarius people you're going to be busy okay you're going to be quite in the spotlight you're going to be in demand you're going to be busy you're going to be engaged you're going to be on the playing field you've got a lot of kindra energy lit up there so i do think that this is there's going to be a busy time and i have seen that i have seen a lot of people who are when they are you know saturn's passing over the moon yeah you're you're employed you're busy you're lots going on you're you know the last thing you want is to have these challenges or the spanner in the works type energy come in but it, it can be like this but you're watching a report like this so you're more conscious you're more understanding so through that awareness the gaze of your awareness and preparedness right will dissolve the problem it won't hurt you as much or hit you as bad Okay, and I notice that people who are on a spiritual path, Sadi Sati barely touches them. It really affects people who are massively shady. Okay, so that's probably not you, okay, because you're watching a video like this. So please don't be worried. Now, there's a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May in Scorpio Vishaka Nakshatra in your 10th house. So there could be sudden shifts and changes. There could be sudden shifts and changes at your work. There could be sudden shifts or changes regarding mother or father, uh, or even to do with your health as well, actually. Please take care at this time. So that's 16th of May. Don't rush. If you're traveling anywhere, um, build extra time into your day. You know, don't stack your day with meetings or, or too much. If you can make it an easier day or on the 16th of May, that would be a really good thing to do. And we've got a new moon happening on the 30th of May. Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra, this is happening in your fourth house. This is a great time to plant a seed for a new home or renovations to your home or something you want to, I don't know, you want to upgrade your home, you want to make it more beautiful, more comfortable. Uh, this is a really good time to plant a seed to make that happen. So Aquarius, you're going to be fine. Okay, please don't worry. Please don't um, think that you know, I, I know what that is when I've looked up stuff for me and I see, oh no, I'm coming up for a terrible transit and how depressing that can be, I know. But what I do is I actually reflect, I've, I've reflected on, on the toughest transits I've been through and actually those are the times that have made me. Like, you know, I've shown myself that that I can get through it and the, the way to do it this is this is the way to get through any tough situation is <clears throat> to visualize and think about 
who you want to be like who how do you want to handle it and that's what I do I think about people I admire and I think about people who like wow that person you know I bet she handles stuff with grace and sophistication and style and I think yeah I want to be like that and I keep my focus there I keep my focus on who I want to be rather than the tough situation or the bad thing or whatever it is and that helps me enormously that really helps me get through those tough situations where I keep the focus on who do I want to be through that that period that that seems to help me a lot Aquarius take care during this transit and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon even Pisces sun if sun is very significant for you now we are going to take a look at Saturn's transit into your 12th house this is across the month of May June and the first half of July so for Pisces moon people Sadi Sati is beginning all right so you are going to get a 2.5 month taste of your Sadi Sati period so this is a really good period of time to observe and if you have a regular journaling practice or any of that uh, you might want to write down how this 2.5 months is that would be a really good activity and observe see how it is for you and you might discover hey this is quite all right you know um, a lot of people especially people who are on the spiritual path they find that Sadi Sati period is just a bit like Groundhog Day you know it's, it's nothing more than that it's just kind of the same day again and again and again and it's actually a really nice long block of time 7.5 years where you can write a book you can master a skill you know like in Groundhog Day you can become a brilliant jazz pianist right so what is it that thing that you want to master that you need kind of stability and you need just a regular boring life sort of boring time where you can just get on and become excellent at something right so that's what this 7.5 year period can be all about uh, I've got the note here that this is a 7.5 year period where Saturn goes over the moon he is combing through your mind and your life it's kind of like he's he's combing through your mind and what how I felt it personally is it like he's ripping the weeds out he's you know whatever's not good in the mind he's taking it out Saturn gets you to be real he gets you to be true you know this is not a time for fantasy thinking or escapism or any of that you are going to have to attend to your life you're going to have to attend to the reality and you're going to have to deal with it there's no running away uh, with, with Saturn or with Sadi Sati period <clears throat> I've got the note here if you are honest self honest if you're honest with yourself if you and so if you practice self honesty and self love these are the two things I always say with Sadi Sati if you just practice those two things I mean not only will you come out scratch free you'll you'll be rewarded okay Saturn rewards you when you come out of Sadi Sati period when he is third from the moon he rewards you so this is an exciting time right this this is this 2.5 months is your opportunity to see really how this energy feels and I'm excited for you Pisces honestly I I know what these tough transits are like I have um, I'm kind of still in a 12th from transit you, you've got Saturn 12th from here you know I, I'm kind of completing a 12th from transit and it's been tough you know it's it took me out of my home in London you know made me very very ill I had to work through such massive illness and uh, yes it, it but this is a highlight transit for me because I have learned so much that I didn't learn in the other easier transits so if, if there are challenges you know we do come to love the challenges because that's where we learn the most from that's where we gain the most wisdom and you know so many of you are on a spiritual path here you Pisces people you're such beautiful people you're on a spiritual path all you want to do is share the love and share the wisdom and I'm telling you you're gonna clock up so much 
love and wisdom through this this period and you're going to share it all i know that let's have a look here i've got the note here um, it's essential to look after your health and this look this even applies even if you're like pisces uh ascendant okay uh, because my 12th from transit is yes 12th from my ascendant that i've just experienced that has been so you know so incredibly challenging so yeah even ascendant some of you you, you might be uh experiencing it's, it's possible to experience some tough stuff in this period but please don't um be put off uh, you know don't don't feel like um bad things could happen you see what happens is when we use a tool like astrology we are looking in advance and we're becoming consciously aware and understanding now when we become aware this is why all the spiritual teachers go on so much about awareness because by becoming aware the, the negativity dissolves it dissolves it really does when you see the pattern that oh wow all all my relationships with this this type of person is a reflection of my relationship with my father or my mother or whatever you know and that same dynamic keeps being shown to me and when you really start looking and when you really start observing becoming aware it just these things start to dissolve and and life isn't about that anymore because you've learnt the lesson, you've understood, and then you can focus on just what do you want to create. You will be more free. So Pisces, what I would say is that do your spiritual work through this time. Just become more aware, become more understanding, you know, um, of the dynamics and patterns. And the, the awareness, you'll see, it will dissolve things. One thing that I've discovered through astrology, my astrology studies, is that I've become aware of so many of these uh, negative yogas and difficult placements and difficult transits and all these things. But that has helped me to see things in advance. And then they don't even arise or they don't even happen. Or when they're happening, I'm like, ah, oh, it's that thing. And it starts dissolving. Like It's just incredible. So know that you can dissolve a lot at this time. I've got the note here. Um, yeah, it's essential to look after your health now and for the next 2.5 years starting Jan 2023, please look after your health. Don't overwork, don't, don't do any of that. Don't overwork, okay? Um, you're gonna wanna take time out. You're gonna wanna isolate. You're gonna wanna be alone. You're gonna wanna do meditation. You're gonna wanna study. You could write a book. Yeah, this is great for creative alone time. So this, I believe this phase that you're coming up to, this is an excellent part of Sadi Sati actually. So enjoy this. There are things to enjoy here. Now there is a full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 16th of May in Scorpio Vishaka Nakshatra. And that's happening in your ninth house. So there could be sudden shifts that happen in relation to your work, um, your father, or even your own sense of authority. You might have to stand up for yourself at this time, that kind of thing. So yes, I was looking at the ninth house, but I was also looking at the position of Mars because Mars is a significant Lord in this eclipse. So there could be a few things that are being impacted with that eclipse on the 16th of May. Uh, if you have to travel or any of that, please go slow. Okay, please don't rush. Please take time. You know, travel could be something that you uh, needed to do at that time, but please take extra, extra care if you're traveling around the 16th of May. Now there's a new moon happening on the 30th of May. This is Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening in your third house. So plant a seed for any future travels, any future pilgrimages, okay? This time that you're entering, so and this 2.5, month period you might be organizing certain pilgrimages you might be getting plans or ideas or you know think ideas that hey at the start of next year in that 2.5 year period you know that you'd really love to go to Egypt or I don't know, or to India or to you know where would I want to go I want to go to um, gosh is it Mount Kailash the place where Raman Maharishi was. I really want to go there. I want to walk around the mountain. You know, I want to do things like that. So yeah, I would be planning that kind of thing. Like if you're able to, 
do a retreat or a pilgrimage or go somewhere that you've heard about that you just you know that excites you where you could you could be alone and you can meditate or something that would be beautiful so who knows you might get some ideas or you might well you can certainly plan to wish for it on the 30th of may that would be a very appropriate time yeah to 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 wish for some kind of beautiful pilgrimage that would be very in line with what you got going on but pisces it's a good time for you right it's a good nurturing soul time good time to to meditate to dissolve anything in your subconscious mind that that you don't need anymore i want to thank you so much for tuning in i was just taking the time there thank you so much for tuning in everybody and any of those of you who have watched the whole report i know some of you do do that i want to thank all of those of you the, the pisces people who are still here you guys always get to see the end uh, please do subscribe if you feel so inspired that will be a nice easy way for you to keep receiving these videos and i look forward to seeing you next time 